Welcome to What's the Story? My name is Janice Hermson. I am your host, and we have a very special show for you today. If you are on my distribution list, you got the notice, and uh, if not, you should be. So you should go to hermson.substack.com, and you can uh, sign up there, subscribe. It's free. I don't charge for this. And uh, you can find out about what shows we're going to have on. I write articles every now and then, things of interest. Hey, election. put me on that list. <laughs> I don't think I'm on it. I better get on for it. For shame. I know. Get me <laughs> on it. What's up with that? What's it cost? <laughs> oh, $10 for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody else is free. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair we'll enough. Give, we'll, you, you'll give him a yeah. deal. I'll give him a deal. Yeah. That's right. Yes. And that's the voice of Doug Ashby, author of Heroes and Giants. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Good. And the other one that you heard over there is Ed Knoll, Omega Mortgage. Howdy. Hi. Yes. And our very special guest today is the gentleman that... Um, took it upon himself to go and do an unauthorized tour of Washoe County's failing homeless program. And he's here to tell his story. His name is Paul White. Welcome, Paul. Glad to be here. <laughs> Paul's been on with us quite a quite some time ago, but uh, he's talked about the homeless problem before you had a program going. Why don't you give a little bit of history about what you had going on before, kind of where you are today, and why you decided to do this? We had a foundation called Stronghold Institute, and uh, the purpose of that was to try to come up with some replicable models for anything from teaching kids in schools to how to get the homeless off the street. We had some good success, and uh, that ran for a while, and then our, uh, our founder actually passed. Oh. And so, but well, it was a great run. And uh, so in the meantime, like you say, just working a lot of things, just came off working on a political campaign, uh, Joy Gilbert's campaign for governor. And um, so back kind of seeing what's new on the homeless scene in Washoe County, and it was not good news. Yeah, it's too bad. That's really too bad. So um, the CARES campus here in Washoe County, Nevada, if you're not familiar with it, is open uh, May-ish in 2021, and it houses men and couples. And then I guess there's a place for women that they send women to a place called Our Place. Correct. And if that's not, or if that's full, then they can stay at the CARES facility. Mm -hmm. uh, so give us a little insight. You you called and you wanted to do a, a tour. You said, you know, they've been doing this for over a year. You wanted to go and just check things out. Well, what we knew from uh, when we first looked into it in Reno um, four or five years ago, uh, we knew it was a mess back then. And in the old facility and the city council was in complete denial and actually flat out lying to the community about how it was. And uh, I'd volunteered, gone into their old tent one night and pulled a shift as a volunteer. And um, weapons, drugs, out of control behavior, and that was a temporary place. So we heard about this one. They put about, uh, well, they put close to $20 million into it, depending on who you talk to, anywhere from 20 to $38 million the first year, and up 10 months. And uh, I, I called the head of the, the county now who operates it. I called to ask them if I could get a public tour, and they said, uh, no, they weren't doing any, which seems strange because they were incredibly proud when this opened saying how what a good job it would do yeah i remember a gov yeah. came up for that he didn't come up for anything <laughs> yeah exactly he was here and he said oh it was going to be great and uh i said well when do you plan to have them oh they couldn't tell me so i talked to a friend of two friends of mine one who was a client there one who is and um uh i said boy i'd really love to get inside there and they said well let's go so we just uh, went over there on a Saturday morning, and the guy who was a resident was going back in. He has some physical issues, needed some help. So my other friend and I were helping him get there. We took him into by the security area where you go. It looks official. I well, got a metal detector and about three, four guards. And um, they said, well, our, do you all stay here too? And we said, no, but we're helping him. They said, okay. And they said, well, do you need beds? Which was interesting because the city's position is that it's always full. And uh, 
So we went in, and like I said in my article, oh, because they, they set up this security checkpoint because there'd been so many uh, uh, violent incidents, been some stabbings. Um, they've had 10 people die there in the first 10 months. And uh, they're not real. They don't really elucidate a lot about how they died. I was going to say, I hadn't seen that stat. No. I, we, you don't see that one in the morning. No. no. <laughs> and uh, anybody who lives here will tell you that five have died on fentanyl overdoses in the last few weeks. And they'll also tell you they bought the drugs from the staff. Oh, wow. Uh, this is, um, you know, this is what guys who live there will tell you. And uh, so going through the security checkpoint. If I'd had a full-size machete or an AR-15, they probably would have caught that. Anything less, come on in. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And which validates what the residents will tell you, that every kind of weapon and drug and alcohol and whatnot is in there. And that's, um, but, you know, a long story short, the reason it fails, like every homeless pro program, pretty much it gets government funding. When you take the federal money, Along with that comes the federal philosophy, which is, depending on the day, which euphemism they use, housing first, or low barrier, or more accurately called wet housing, because anything goes with behavior and drugs and alcohol. And their theory they've bought into is that you come off the street, about, now I, I've been working with homeless for going on 50 years, so I've seen a few. <laughs> and uh, the statistics back up about 90% of the people on the street. Um, it's drug alcohol addiction and every, all the things it causes that come with it. So the theory behind the federal funding is, well, set up a shelter, bring them off the street, and just through osmosis, they will want to get clean and sober. Mm. <laughs> and if you've ever had a family member, a friend, and brought them in it's your home the way it works. that you'd think that would work. <laughs> and after your house was torn apart yeah, and your relationship exactly. was gone. Yeah. You know, on that note, we're going to, we're going to take a little break. We're going to hear more about your story. When we come back, uh, you are listening to what's the story. We'll be right back. Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to LRPNV.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones? Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you, and they have a professional assistant on-site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775-356-1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices, books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand you or your business, just call 775-356-1004 or go to lrpnv.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Man on the Map, does every week. Just go to lrpnv.com. That's lrpnv.com or call 775-356-1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. Hi, I'm Noreen Leary, CEO of the Veterans Guest House. Guest House is a home away from home for our veterans and their families who travel to Reno for medical care. Our house is more than just a warm bed. It's a place of camaraderie where veterans can find support and long-lasting friends. We serve veterans, men and women, young and old, Navy, Army, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Force. Wherever they hail from and whatever their circumstance, the Veterans Guest House is ready to support them. The reason we feel so strongly about our mission is that we know that many veterans would forgo their medical treatments because they simply can't afford the accommodations. The guest house is one of a kind in the country, funded entirely through private donations. Want to know how you can help? There are many ways you can be involved, from volunteering, providing dinners, or supplying items from our wish list. Find out more about the guest house at www.veteransguesthouse.org. Serving veterans today, tomorrow, and for years to come. Slice the sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of Subway. Could be a smoking number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is your number one thing. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Slice the sandwiches, port of Subs. 
Port of Subs is celebrating 50 years as your neighborhood sandwich shop. We're saying mahalo to our customers with a chance to win a dream vacation to Maui for four. Imagine spending a week lounging on sun-drenched beaches and falling asleep to the sound of rolling waves. Entering is easy. Visit portofsubs.com to enter to win Port of Subs' 50th anniversary getaway and join our Port Perks program for fun and delicious ways to earn extra entries. Aloha. No purchase necessary. Whatever your number, you dream and Sliced fresh sandwiches, for the subs. Wake up the sun below, got another road to sow. Let the fire fill the hole, swelling up from the depths of my soul. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americamatters.us and click on the podcast link. Now back to the show. Back. This is What's the Story. I'm Janice Hermson. I'm your host. And we have been chatting with Paul White, who is sharing his story. He wrote an article called An Unauthorized Tour of Washoe County's $17 million Dangerously Failing Homeless Program. Uh, it was published on July 26th, and I will share that on my page. And um, uh, and so we, we wanted to chat with Paul. We've had him here before. He's taught, you know, he's dealt with homeless for many, 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 many years in many different places. And when we were off air, he was even telling us a bit about in LA, some of the experiences he's had. Um, what I want to do right now, first of all, I want to offer to anybody in Washoe County who'd like to come on and, and counter this, I would love to have you come on and talk to us about how you would address some of the issues that and and paul can be here and he can you know you can chit chat together if you'd like um i'd love to hear the other side of the story i i had not heard this personally from paul and i wanted to hear that first so um so share a little bit about who is the which department is it in washoe county that manages this facility uh you know jan i don't uh you just remember called. the official department okay. name, but I got I got connected with the woman who handles homeless services. Okay, and she's over this. And um, yeah, I mean the the simple part is you can't have a good program until you've got sobriety and behavioral compliance and forcing the clients to correct the things that got them homeless in the first place. Well, as long as you're taking the federal money, you can't require any of those things. So. The uh, city is. So let me ask you if you, I don't know if you'll know the answer to this, but so they, they take the money. What if they didn't take the money? How much of this is funded by the feds versus what we could do ourselves through the county? Or do you even know? Uh, oh, I'd say conservatively speaking, uh, you could fund a program that worked for 75% less <laughs> than they're spending. They put a few million dollars a year in out of the city budget, and that'd be more than enough. I mean, what what have been results the last two years? Our homeless population has doubled. Oh, yes. Crime's gone up, and the amount we're spending on it has quadrupled. And if, if what I'm hearing from you is correct, the people that are there are not safe. And the, so there must be a number of people that don't even want to come in. So just can you hear the attorneys listening now? <laughs> right. I'm just saying, oh, right. It just that, one, it takes one stabbing for someone to live and find an attorney and the city's on the hook. You know, it, it, what it sounds like is what they've done is they've taken this populace and put a a tent cover over we're it. just lucky they Literally. didn't <laughs> we're lucky they didn't bring it out to the full city limits just put it over the whole daggone city well you, you know you know paul it, it seems to me and especially coming from the federal level this is feel-good politics they go oh my gosh look we spent 20 million dollars and look what we did well yeah but what are the results they don't go that far and if you question them i guarantee you you will be put on the defensive because you don't agree with them. Absolutely. And then they will start name calling you. Absolutely. Well, uh, the guys who have been in there um, will tell you that uh, it's dangerous than many prisons they've been in. What's, what's that tell you? Yeah, that's frightening. And they just need to, uh, the city just needs to say, tell them to get off the, uh, get off the government uh, faucet there. Fund it locally. You could have, you could require accountability, just like the Reno Sparks Gospel Mission, 
which has no federal money, has a 60-year record of great programs and results. They do it on a percent, a tiny piece of what we spend. Uh, it's it's that simple, but again, it doesn't allow the politicians to grandstand. Yeah. And all these foundations and organizations uh, the, and that they subcontract with, all of which are living off that 30, 40 million plus a year that's coming in on this. I think that's the solution. We just give them 50 grand each and have them sign a thing saying they're not coming back. That'd be yeah. cheaper than what we got now. <laughs> well, I, I like the way they used to have it. They'd put them on a bus and send them to Oregon. Well, give them 50 grand, put them on a bus and go, right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, here, here's a statistic. You, It's unpleasant. Most people don't think about over half of our crime and 60% of our emergency services are used by the uh, vagrant by choice is a more accurate descriptor of the homeless uh, is used by that less than 1% of the population. Well, that means if say if 1% is using 60% of emergency services as a fireman explained to me one time, that means 99% of the community is having to divvy up 40% of the emergency services. And as the fireman told me, that means there's people out there with three and four year olds who are going to choke on something and that child's going to die because the fire stations were so tied up with having to go out for the third time that day and pull a uh, insane drunk homeless guy out of the intersection and take him to the hospital still more one time because he didn't want to go get treatment. And they're not going to be able to get to that home quick enough to save that child's life. You know, you know, Paul, it's even it's even worse than that, because, you know, again, putting on my fire hat, we go out to an incident and you, you do. You have a guy laying on the lawn. Somebody calls. Is this guy dead? Is he asleep? What's the deal? Is he just drunk? What you know, what's the deal? You go out there. You have to do something with them. Now, here are your options. Well, he's he's drunk. He's not sick. Well, the hospital doesn't want him. Okay. So that, all right, now the sheriff will take him sheriff. Well, that means the sheriff has to arrest him. They don't want to arrest him. They don't want to put him in the jail because then in the jail, they'll probably end up getting a call and going back to the hospital. So what do you do with these people? I mean, you can't just kick them loose and say, hey, nice talking to you. Go ahead, lay here on the lawn. You actually have to solve that issue. And you end up chasing your tail with them. And it's very, very frustrating. I mean, it's not so, only So that. let him answer that. Yeah, well, what, 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 what they could do, uh, the first thing, what they sh shouldn't have done and what they could do. What they shouldn't have done is they set up a community court, again, with federal funding, right? Meets every Wednesday morning at the center lo on Center Street Library. Now, they're not going to call it the homeless court. That'd be like calling it the black court or the white court or the senior citizens court. It'd be two tiers of justice, wh which it is. And so any of these things you mentioned, uh, going to the bathroom in public, uh, uh, harassing, trespassing, etc. Any of us here at the table would go to the court. If we kept going, we'd be getting fined or doing some jail time. What they do there, thank them for coming when they show up. Give them a little bag lunch. Uh, talk to them and say, well, have you thought about getting some services? Now, meanwhile, this is the judge. In fact, he's on, on the website explaining this. Let's say the judge had a law practice, and every morning they were having a cleanup where homeless people had defecated and urinated all over his entrance. This happens all over town. Now, and he was losing customers because of that. Would he be satisfied with the court saying, oh, you ought to get some services or laughing it off? Or maybe they'll have him go pick up three pieces of paper in the parking lot and they'll say, okay, we'll call it even. Don't come anymore. And then, but come back in a month and tell us how you're doing. Then the homeless person disappears for months. When he comes back, he gives you another sad story and on it goes. So that's how they shouldn't do it. What they should do that makes it real easy. Uh, one of the guys who works for the city heads up like the next level homeless program. And this is ironic. He runs a program it's federal, including his position, funded by the federal that doesn't allow rules. Okay, he has quite a good story, how he got off the streets down in uh, Las Vegas years ago and off the street life and drugs. And when you hear him talk, what will he tell you right away 
is what got him off the street. He says, I got tired of going to jail. <laughs> it's well, a nice it, it worked it work then, it works now. And you hear him say you can't arrest your way out of the pro pro problem. I don't know. Works for murder, works for kidnapping, works for uh, bank robbery. And so you set up low security jails and you jail them. And as they keep coming back, you increase it. Well, any place that has tried this, like I say, when the homeless, when the Sparks mission has their rules, follow the rules and we help you. Don't follow the rules. Come back when you're ready to. When a town would have no other option for people but get in a program or go to jail, they'd do just what that guy who runs the program for Reno would do. And they'd get tired of going to jail and they'd do it. But they or leave. Right. But it, we, we hate to say it, but it's only honest for the community to know. Um, we've got a sheriff and a police chief who are absolute cowards when it comes to enforcing the law. They don't because they get pressured by the council or the commissioners and they don't enforce it. The deputies and the police officers could not be more frustrated. We've been told morale is the worst it's ever been because, because they're up. <laughs> Sounds like the Queen's chiming in. I was going to say, the Queen's on her way. (laughs) (laughs) She must concur. (laughs) And so they will not challenge their authority, who's told them not to enforce the law. And as a result, who's it working for? You've got the homeless needlessly self-destroying themselves, destroying themselves. You've got a community dealing with more crime. Uh, You've got more... uh, building more facilities that are not working. Who is this benefiting? And yet they won't change. Yeah. That's, but that's why elections are coming up. We need right. new people in charge. I was just going to say, and that's why I elections mean, so, are so important. It's just ridiculous. Because you, right? you said it. Commissioners, council people, all of that is part of the problem. And we need to fix that. So election integrity, I say it all the time. You guys know, get tired of me. This should come up. <laughs> this should come up as a fourth grade problem and have the class solve it. They'd solve it our way. They would. All right. We're going to be right back. You're listening to What's the Story? Charbecue the Butcher's Kitchen would like to thank every customer for your loyalty and continued support through these challenging times. Call for takeout and delivery of rib tips, brisket, ahi tuna, roasted veggies, and much more. Charbecue is open from 11 to 7. Monday through Saturday and delivers hot food safe and healthy. Call 499-5855 for details. 499-5855 Charbecue as featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Get real. Get into Charbecue Reno. Hi, this is Eddie Floyd. Let me tell you about my favorite nonprofit public charity, Nema Wild Horse Sanctuary, located on the Forsyth Ranch in Hallelujah Junction area. And please go to www.wynemaranch.com. That's W-Y-N-E-M-A ranch.com. Hi, I'm Noreen Leary, CEO of the Veterans Guest House. Guest House is a home away from home for our veterans and their families who travel to Reno for medical care. Our house is more than just a warm bed. It's a place of camaraderie where veterans can find support and long-lasting friends. We serve veterans, men and women, young and old, Navy, Army, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Force. Wherever they hail from and whatever their circumstance, the Veterans Guest House is ready to support them. The reason we feel so strongly about our mission is that we know that many veterans would forgo their medical treatments because they simply can't afford the accommodations. The guest house is one of a kind in the country, funded entirely through private donations. Want to know how you can help? There are many ways you can be involved, from volunteering, providing dinners, or supplying items from our wish list. Find out more about the guest house at www.veteransguesthouse.org. Serving veterans today, tomorrow, and for years to come. At Northern Nevada Family Dental, we are proud to announce a wide range of advanced dental services by way of the Photon Light Walker Laser. 
The Light Walker laser can efficiently and effectively treat most periodontal problems from deep persistent pocketing to peri-implantitis and a multitude of conditions in between. Have cold sores? We can inhibit the cycle of the virus and sometimes even prevent them from occurring. Do you have a snoring or CPAP problem? Through the amazing healing power of light, we can treat tissues inside the mouth without anesthesia, appliances, or cutting so that after just one treatment, most people sleep better and quieter that same night. By using the power of the laser intraorally, we can also smooth facial wrinkles and tighten sagging necklines, all without you having to be numb and there's no downtime. It can even be done on a lunch break. Through the FDA-approved Power of Light, these treatments and many more are now available at Northern Nevada Family Dental in Sparks. Have I piqued your interest? Give us a call at 626-7772 or visit us at northernnevadafamilydental.com. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Now back to the show. Welcome back. You can always tell when we have an awesome guest because off the air, we're having as much conversation as we do on. And and uh, <laughs> we, we solve them all. Come on. What are you talking about? We're solution makers, right? So I want to get back a little bit and go back to the beginning of the story where, where you were basically asked, hey, you need a bed? And in, in reality, um, the, the county is saying that there are no beds. And yet you walk in there and the first thing they do is kind of say, hey, there's room if you want, if you want someplace right. to Right. Well, let, let me get through it as quick as I can there, Jan. Okay, so they tell you there are none. Now, the reason they do that is because you heard of this Martin versus Boise Ninth Circuit ruling several years ago that said the cops arrested a homeless guy on the street in Boise and he said, well, there's no bed for me. So he took it to the Ninth Circuit and they said, if there's not a bed available, you can't arrest him for sleeping on the sidewalk. So Reno, Washoe, does not want him arrested. So they say <laughs> that they're full. So that then, therefore, the police don't go when, in fact, the two people I was with, my two friends who have been and are residents there, so there's all kinds of beds every night. And so this is just a flat-out lie. A lot of people just reserve them so they can come on the campus easier, use their facilities, and still prefer sleeping outside. So there's actually a process whereby they have to kind of quote, register when they come in or or they can reserve a, a bed to stay in? Is that what yeah, I'm understanding? It, it, it just, I'd co <laughs> I just come up to you and say, I'm Paul, why here's my ID? Can I have a bed? Okay. All right. And um, <laughs> so now you come in and you see this beautiful place inside, big, you know, you get a lot of tent for $17 million. I would think so. And uh, you <laughs> and look it's over. it's literally a tent? Yeah, it's, you know, like that real tight fabric. Gotcha. It looks semi-permanent. Gotcha. Yeah. So the one fellow who was with us pointed to all these areas where offices were, and they were all locked up and dark. I said, He says, yeah, this is where supposedly the social workers are. They're never around. <laughs> and then It's you, not a nice place. Why would they want to be there? <laughs> then you look, and if you, I've been a prison chaplain for a long time, so if you've ever been in a prison dorm, uh, just imagine a big, huge area. And maybe, you know, 150 or so bunks and uh, guards up at the front. Well, this had two staff members, but not 150 bunks. How about 500? Oh, wow. And you look back in there. Well, there's no way you could see what's going on at night. And as one of my friends said, you don't want to know what goes on there at night. Everything from, you know, sexual assaults to beatings, extortings, yeah. robberies. Plausible deniability. Oh, yeah, everything. So they're way back out of the way there. And then um, the bunks, this is middle of the day. You'd be outside working, wouldn't you? Well, no. Uh, the place had dozens and dozens of young men, and I'm talking about 40 or under, uh, just sleeping it off. And uh, again, my residents told me about three different gangs in town have kind of taken up establishment there. And so, of course, what you're doing is, and you come, you come and go on the place. I mean, oh, they'll they'll say yes and no, you can, but it, it's 
what they'll tell you and what's really going on are two different things. So you'll just see this. All these people that have no interest in getting no, and getting no help and getting sober or a job uh, or cleaning up their lives of, you know, a, a train wreck of incidents and child care, et cetera, sure. et cetera. Yeah. And so it's just uh, storing them. And it's only going to get worse, and they're only going to draw more people. And like he said, rehabbing them. He said, what addict would want to leave this place? And most of us are. He says, give you three meals a day, let you use or drink. Uh, your laundry's free. Your food's free. And you say, well, if their food's free, what on earth are they doing with their $200 a month uh, food stamps? What are they doing with them? Sell them, I was going to say, sell them. Sell sure, them. sure they are. Yeah. And they don't have to go look for a phone because they get one for free. Free. Okay. Yeah, wow. it's a mess. You know, it's a mess. You know, wow. Paul, these are all end user problems. How are we doing at the bottom end with bringing people into this country that don't have anything? Is this just a, is this a perpetual problem? Or swap. No, I propose a swap. We take homeless and swap them out for hardworking immigrants. We do better, we do better <laughs> right? We agree. just one for one, even <laughs> even money. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's true. Um, I mean, it, it's not only a people problem; it's a fentanyl problem, and yet nobody's analyzed that problem. At least anybody that that is in a, a power position that has the ability to change things won't. Right. Well, in what nation? What nation in the world functions with uh, com uh, swinging door borders come in like ours? None. Yeah. That's so the the solution here is multifaceted, and obviously you saw a lot of things that you probably would rather not have. And how long were you just there for? Like a little while, just you know, better part of an hour. Oh, okay, so about an hour, and you saw quite a bit. It sounds like in an hour. Oh, we saw quite a lot, and. So now remember, this has been open a little over a year, you know, 17, 18 million to get it going. Um, the place has been so, okay, take your pick. It's just they bought it cheap and it really fell apart over the past year or it's been so horribly abused. They're doing close to a million dollars worth of remodel oh my. a year later. Wow. And things like doors torn off their hinges and stuff. Well, the only problem with their argument on it's not abuse is at the former homeless shelter just down the street, they would go in there. They'd have, say, like, say, a two-hour shower time or whatever every morning. And then I talked to people that work there. It would take a crew of five or six, several hours to clean up the shower after they got out and they trashed it so bad. How do you do that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and, how, and, and, and so this thing, then these, so these showers were rotted and moldy and they were letting the people just, instead of putting hours of operations, supervising it, go do what you want. And then now the argument, they're, they're going to put in cubicles around these bunks Ooh. because they should have privacy. Oh. That's great. Easier to sell drugs, easier to run prostitution. Sure. And they oh do both. Lord. Yeah. Wow. So the the uh, real solution is first to get rid of the federal money. Absolutely. And then once that happens, then they need somebody that knows how to run a program. Common sense rules. Yeah. What, what Janice, what politician would say, yeah, you know, you're right. Let's get rid of that thirty million. We don't need it. I well, mean it, it's just in it, essence, but they need though, to. Yeah, in essence but, they do but, because well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. My my theory on this is this is all about public pressure. If the public finds out that that's not really working, and I, for one, know it's not because we have homeless people right down the street from us at our shop that would prefer to be out on that street, no matter what the weather. I've seen them in winter. I've seen, seen them in summer. It doesn't seem to matter. They're always there, and they're not at that facility. Well, the one thing, Jenna, I want to mention, uh, not forget to mention, is what's causing it okay so the homelessness is really just the final step it's just the effect of what's failing the parenting's failing badly huh. the kids come up like this now the schools are sending them out 65 to 85 percent functionally illiterate we graduate we put four thousand of those kids into the community every year 
and that's a, a leading uh, indicator of homelessness. Then we send out 85% of our high school grads have never worked a job by the time they're 18. Lack of work experience, leading indicator of future homelessness. Drug alcohol abuse starting early. Mm, about a third of our kids are estimated to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol in class during the day. And so we are absolutely grooming them. Then you've got a place like, and again, this will have some people just hold their hands up in horror, places in the community that mean to do well, say like an Eddie House, where they say they work with, quote, runaways and lost kids. Uh, Want to guess what the age of their target group is? 18 to 24? I was teaching a class there till recently. Yeah. So I got canned. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, again, again, taking, fe taking federal money. Can they drug test? Can they force a job? Can they do this? And the goal is to get them subsidized. Everything comes together. The prison system, we have about 70% parolees in there. It's the, the prison, see, have used COVID as an excuse for shutting down every program in the prison. The guys are just locked down all the time. So now... Is it any surprise that when all of these problems are draining them out, where do they end up? In this warehouse, this $17 million tent warehouse over there off of 4th Street. Wow. Yeah. You know, you, you hit a, a very uh, touchy point with me. I graduated from college as an industrial arts teacher. And our premise was what we wanted to do is in high school, let's teach these kids to be electrician or an auto mechanic. You know, there's just a variety of things they could do. What was the first thing that has been cut from the budget is those because, you know, they weren't part of the you know, reading, writing, arithmetic. So those went south. Today, they are still, the schools are not producing employable people. They just flat don't do it. And we talked about this a little a little bit ago. They haven't analyzed the problem. Yeah. Well, see, there's no, there's no rules in the school either. And so it's gone a step lower. We've got right now, you could go out right now and get somebody into a internship through the unions. You could go out and they've got some really great tech programs. Here's what they're lacking. And when you rehear a... Uh, Economic development, is it Mike Kazmierski, who writes a lot for the Gazette Journal? It's a fantasy land they're living in. They've got <laughs> programs. They don't have any kids that want to work. They don't have any kids who've got the basic skills to be able to read a ruler. When you're 65 to 85% functionally illiterate are our kids. And so this is just, it's like, and then they talk about, well, right now a teacher starts in Washoe. 39, 40,000 a year. I went into Panda Express a few weeks ago. They had signs up all over outside. Come work for Panda Express. Start out 43,000 with benefits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's you, the matter with and this? Teachers, and teachers, the assault. <clears throat> teachers, the, uh, the degree to which they're assaulted and abused verbally and physically and having spent a lot of the campaign season down in Clark County, oh, let me tell you. Uh, oh, the teacher who was, uh, uh, kid was unhappy with his grade, came in after school in her classroom, high school in Clark County, uh, wrapped a telephone cord around her neck, uh, beat her head on the floor until she passed out, raped her, she came to, raped her oh again, God. flipped over a heavy file, came out, left on her. She lay on there like that for two hours for the custodian found her. And this is not an isolated case. It's, uh, and again, the first thing the homeless people have done is what? Cut off the public tour. You can't right. come see it. Right. What have the schools cut off? Yeah. You, you can't, can't get inside in. yeah. a parent. Only if a little dog and pony show and you book a, a right. year in advance. Right. No. And what's the school board doing? In a room as big as this little office, can't come in. And we'll go back to, you got to vote. You got to vote. All right, we're going to be right back with more from Paul White and the homeless problem. Okay, we are running a car drive right now to help veterans all across America. So if you have an old car, truck, or van, even a motorcycle or an RV sitting around, you can right now give it away and help the vets. They really need your help. And your car will help support the vets and their families. And guess what? You even get a tax donation. Plus, we'll even come and pick up your car for free. And all you've got to do is pick up your phone right now and make a free call. Now is the perfect time 
time to do something good for the vets. Give back to the vets right now for all they've done for this country. And your old car can really help them. So call the Veterans Car Donation Program right now for free pickup of your vehicle. Help the vets and help your taxes at the same time. Call right now. 800-296-1259. 800-296-1259. That's 800-296-1259. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Patterson. I'm the founder and owner of Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists. At Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists, we take a comprehensive approach to treating patients with chronic pain in the greater Reno, Tahoe area. We believe in the biopsychosocial model. This means we use multiple disciplines such as massage therapy, physical therapy, behavioral health, and medical treatments to treat your chronic pain. A plan of care is tailor-made for each individual patient. We always recommend conservative care first, but offer minimally invasive treatments when necessary. We are your one-stop shop. If it hurts, we can help. We pride ourselves in providing passionate care and making you feel welcome and understood. We are located in Reno and in Sparks, so give us a call to schedule a new patient consult at 284-8650. Again, that's 284-8650. Or visit our website at nvadvancepain.com. We hope you choose Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists to be your center for injury rehabilitation. nvadvancepain.com, 284-8650. The Delta and Bonanza Saloons in Virginia City are simply elegant. Imagine ascending the grand staircase and being surrounded by the Victorian elegance and grandeur of the historic banquet rooms. Original crystal chandeliers, mahogany bars, and oak dance floors highlight the eloquently appointed spaces. A truly romantic and unique setting for your wedding, banquets, or holiday parties. Detailed ceremony and menu planning ensures your special event is a memorable occasion. With just one call to Jesse at 775-847-0789, all of your arrangements will be handled by their experienced staff with your every expectation in mind including cakes flowers photography videography music and party amenities complete ceremony and reception packages are available as well as their famous themed weddings since 1865 the delta and bonanza saloons guests have come from every state in the union now it's your turn no event is too large or too small let the delta and bonanza saloons plan your next incredible event call jesse at 775-847-0789 at a proper fit footwear in the reno town mall we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years we offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women from all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs hard to fit hard to find a proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet we make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right art support and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet where comfort and your feet meet. To join the conversation, call 844-790-TALK. That's 844-790-8255. Now back to the show. Welcome back. This is What's the Story? I'm Janice Hermson. We are talking to Paul White, who has been sharing his story of visiting the CARES facility in Washoe County. And I will express again, like I did at the beginning of the show, I will be contacting the facility there and and the person that's in charge and inviting that person onto the show and maybe paul and and he or she can uh have a conversation and maybe we can kind of work through some of this stuff you know i'd love to hear that oh you just caught it on a bad day but i kind of suspect that's not the case and I, I also think that it's really important for the community to be aware of these problems because I'm pretty sure most of us thought that, well, they've got that facility, yay, and you know, let's get those folks in there and wondering why we're seeing so many people on the street, right? So um, Paul, 
tell us, I, I want to, before we get too far in here, I want to make sure we talk about the book that it was that written by you, by you and your wife? My wife and I. Yes, that's what I thought. Okay. And it is called Bible Morals for Children, A Parent's Guide. So you kind of put your money where your mouth is and you are trying to help to share what you know about the Bible and morals for children and helping parents get there. Uh, yeah, our purpose in writing it, Jan, uh, I was a public school teacher for decades and a Sunday school teacher, equal amount of time. And as a school teacher, I used, um, would usually start the day with a Bible story. Now, again, for people want to, who don't understand that the separation of church and state is nothing that was ever written in the Declaration of Independence and was to protect churches from the state, not vice versa. There was no... Yeah, we got a lot of things kind of backwards. Yeah, there was, there was uh, nothing in what I told them about trying to convince them to be this or that type of believer, no believer at all. But using the what's acknowledged as the longest running, most effective moral guide and moral principles of stories of any book that's ever been put yeah, out. The most most published oh most no, best no. book in yeah, on earth that's ever. Right, yeah. <laughs> and and so for example, these stories, whether it's um, you know, uh, a child, you, you need to be a David when your Goliath problems seem too big for you to handle, that you do the right thing, you can win. Or, uh, yes, it's it's never too late to change and like the prodigal son, go back home, uh, and so on. And these stories, I was telling these students of mine when they were early teenagers, many of whom are now in their 30s and 40s, and tell me that not only was that the biggest thing that they took with them from the school, these were the hardest kids that L.A. had uh, for a decade of that, but that this they use these with their own children as well. Wow. Yeah. That's inspirational. Where, do, where did you teach school? Uh, I was 10 years in L.A., about 12 years in L.A. County at a uh, – uh, in um, San Fernando Valley, over by Van Nuys and oh, Can Canoga Park. my neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you were my neighbor. So if you got if you got thrown out of the regular school and out of alternative school and out of the uh, other programs the uh, city schools had, then you landed on my doorstep. So we almost had no one who was not previous drug, repeated crimes, gangs, and. Um, there was a book about that school, in fact. It was nationally promoted. And it was picked as one of the top five stories of the year in People magazine. And the reason is, given that clientele, using the rules that we need, a, the biblical principles, using the rules that they should be running the homeless shelter with, et cetera, uh, we had almost 100% attendance. We tested, drug tested, cleaned, 100%. 100% of the kids had jobs. 100% had concurrent college classes and savings accounts and graduated early. And wow. this over a decade. Well, that's why people was interested. It's very unusual. It's yeah. fascinating. It's like, you know, I'm an alcoholic. Everyone, there's no secret, but Bill W., AA books work. They work. They work, right? Get a bunch of people together and get them talking and, and solve you know. some challenges, right? And they're... There's no leadership in these places, right? And, you know, there's no accountability. That's the thing that kills me, right? Hillary took all the credit, her and the gov. They ought to get up there and take a spank and now until they get it fixed. <laughs> you know, there is one step past what you where you were, and that was we had them as L.A. County Fire Department work camps. It was through. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, like so, Camp Rocky? You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of my kids have done time. At camp. That's right. And you're right, you know. Uh, they learned discipline there. And the one thing that uh, uh, when I was in, in college, I worked at uh, Juvenile Hall. As good as they had at Juvenile Hall, there wasn't one kid there that wanted to go back. No. And you know, <laughs> and you know what's interesting? It's the adults who are poisoning them. Haven't had these kids for years. And most of those kids coming up with no dads and horrible backgrounds. And then they would end up going out to the juvenile camps and some different kinds for anywhere from six months to a year. Very strict, get up on time, eat three meals, behave, go to school. Do you know when they would come back? Do you know these kids who had had their lives uprooted 
by law enforcement and had been repeatedly arrested. And you'd ask them, what do you want to do for a career when you grow up? What do you think they would say? Woods. I want to be a cop. Wow. I want to be a probation officer <laughs> because you know why? It's the only men they'd come across in their life who said, it's nothing personal. There's right and there's wrong. You do it. You got to be accountable. And these kids, especially these young men, just were, it's it's inherent in us to want some order and structure in our lives. Right, right. That's very true. Well, you know, it's uh, men in their lives. What, men? Aren't women men? Or I... no. There you go. Enough. Sure. Enough. <laughs> I did post, um, I, I know that it's available on Amazon because I found it. So I've got it posted for you Thank on our you. page. And um, is it available all different places, uh, Barnes & Noble as well? Or yes, we... it's all, yeah, well, okay. no, it's uh, it's on Amazon. And let's see, uh, Sundance Books okay. is carrying it here in Perfect. Reno. And uh, Ada Zen is carrying oh, it in, in, Car Carson in Carson City. City. Yay. Mm, Mike. Yes, yes, he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. I like him. All right. Very good. So is there anything you'd like to close with? We only have about a minute um, and just share with our audience about the homeless problem or about your book, either one. Uh, first of all, I would just tell you how much I appreciate your interest in this issue and giving people a chance to hear what's really going on. Um, no, I would just tell them that uh, our future absolutely is our kids what's happening in the homes. Barbara Bush had a saying. She said the future of the country is not going to be determined by what goes on in anybody's White House. It's going to be determined by what goes on in your house. That's you know? very true. Very and true. in their school, in the homes and in the schools, I cannot urge the people strongly enough. Our schools are an absolute disaster. The lies, the problems, the lack of learning, the, uh, a racist behavior that's allowed, and I don't mean systemic racism. I mean allowing people to get away with stuff because of their race. Right. You cannot comprehend how bad it is. You couldn't do anything worse for your child than leave them in our existing school system. And that's a horrible thing. <laughs> that's to have a horrible to say, thing to have to say, Jan. I understand. But I it's, understand. Couldn't be more true. And I, I hope people hear the message. This isn't a negative. This is to hope to make some change, to improve the schools, improve our problems that we have with homeless. You know, we all want the same thing. We want good for everybody, but we all have to be accountable. All right. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, we'll have you on again. And uh, guys, we'll be back with our second hour. We'll be back after this break. Hey, sister, better watch out. Danger ahead. If you don't look at what you're doing, you're gonna end up dead. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. I'm Andrew Saul, Commissioner of Social Security. I'm here to warn you about telephone scammers pretending to be government employees. Some of these scammers may say threatening things like you will be arrested if you don't make payments or provide personal information. Do not fall for these tricks. These calls are not from us. Real Social Security employees will never threaten you for information or money. If you receive a call like this, hang up. Never give the caller your personal information, like your Social Security number or bank account, or send money in any form, cash, gift cards, wire transfers, or prepaid debit cards. 
report the call to our law enforcement arm, the Office of the Inspector General at oig.ssa.gov. Share this information with your friends and family. This is America Matters Media at 93.7 FM, KPGF Sun Valley, and AM 1060, KFOY Sparks, Nevada. USA Radio News with Tim Berg. The number of job openings is down for the third straight month, and yet another sign the labor market is cooling. The Labor Department saying job openings fell to 10.7 million in June, its lowest level since last fall. The biggest declines were in retail and wholesale trade, followed by state and local government education. The number of people who quit their jobs in June fell slightly. The governor of Texas is inviting the mayors of New York City and Washington, D.C. to see the situation at the southern border for themselves. In a letter to Eric Adams and Muriel Bowser, Republican Greg Abbott said Texas has spent more than $3 billion over the last 18 months addressing the situation. Both mayors are complaining about illegal immigrants being bused from Texas to their cities. This is USA Radio News. Mike Campbell here, serial entrepreneur with words from another happy payroll customer. Patriot Software has saved our business by allowing me to focus on other aspects of the business rather than spending so much time on multiple platforms to do the things entailed on running a business. I found Patriot by complete accident and I don't regret it. It is continuing to save our company and I'm extremely excited to see what else it entails. Easy to learn, easy to use, small business software tailored just for you. Visit us at patriotsoftware.com. Use promo code radio and get two months of payroll free. That's patriotsoftware.com. With patriotsoftware.com, accounting and payroll, keep your time and money. The Justice Department is suing Idaho over the state's abortion law. Attorney General Merrick Garland telling reporters the law doesn't allow exceptions in cases where a woman's health is in jeopardy. The Senate Republican leader is taking more shots at the big Democratic economic package. The Inflation Reduction Act won't reduce inflation any more than the American Rescue Plan actually rescued America. Senate Minority Leader from Kentucky Mitch McConnell saying it would trigger job-killing tax hikes during a recession. He again called it a reckless taxing and spending spree. Voters are going to the polls in five states to decide matchups for the fall election and other key issues. In Kansas, they're voting on a pro-life bill known as Amendment 2 that affirms that Kansas's state constitution doesn't provide a right to abortion. At the closing bell, the Dow lost 402 points to close at 32,396. USA Radio News. Hi, I'm Wayne Alaroot. If you like my radio show, you're going to love my podcast, War Raw. Each podcast, I present my top 10 most outrageous, salacious, and controversial stories of the week. I break down the best of the best raw truth stories for conservatives, libertarians, patriots, taxpayers, Trumpers, and deplorables. Anyone who appreciates God, guns, gold, and tax cuts will stand up and cheer for War Raw. Check out this week's War Raw podcast right now. It's available to download at iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, or wherever you listen to podcasts. War Raw. War Raw. Live Golf offered a figure between $700 and $800 million to Tiger Woods in an attempt to lure the 15-time major winner away from the PGA Tour. That's according to Live Golf CEO Greg Norman. The Saudi-backed golf league has been trying to lure golfers from the PGA to their tour. If a golfer joins the Live Tour, he's not allowed to play PGA Tour events due to the fact that it's linked with Saudi Arabia, which, according to Norman, is the height of hypocrisy. The PGA Tour, I think, has about 27 sponsors on the PGA Tour, do $40-plus billion worth of business on an annual basis in Saudi Arabia. Now, why doesn't the PGA Tour call the, the CEOs of each one of those organizations, oh, sorry, we can't do business with you because you're doing business with Saudi Arabia? Why are they picking on the professional golfers? Why? The male professional golfers. That audio courtesy of Fox News. 
The Senate Majority Leader says there's no justification to delay passage of a veterans aid bill any longer. Every day that passes without action on the PACT Act is another day that our nation's veterans have to do the unthinkable. Fight for basic health care benefits they rightfully deserve. Schumer calling on Republicans and Democrats to work together to get the bill done as soon as possible. For USA Radio News, I'm Tim Berg. The following is an America Matters media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters media. Now she's gone like a little in a song all the way to M.I.A. Where she thinks that she belongs. Now she's gone like a little in a song all the way to M.I.A. Where she thinks that she belongs. Welcome to What's the Story? My name is Janice Hermson. This is our second hour. Our first hour we spent with Paul White, who did a wonderful job of describing for us what goes on at the Karis Campus, which is a homeless center here in Washoe County, Nevada. What a and powerful first hour, wasn't yeah, it? What I an think so. awesome guest. I think so. If you missed it, yeah. it's worth uh, <laughs> it's worth joining in and, and re rehashing that first hour. He's he's very experienced in what he's talking about. He, you know, he has a good understanding and he's looking for solutions. And I think that that's what's most important. Is we don't have solutions. any in homelessness, right? But, we need, but there uh, are solutions. Well, we got to try, right? right? I mean, right. best I know, they're just, you know, well, they're lack not, of, lack of no account- follow up. Yeah, lack of accountability is going to not be a solution, right? I mean, you have to have accountability, whether you're raising children, whether you're trying to help somebody reform, no matter what. I mean, even yourself, if, you, if you've if you got some bad habits, you know that it's going to take discipline in order to, <sighs> to make something happen. So, uh, you know, how can we expect anything else from some folks who've, who've, you know, gone off the path, right? You know, Janice, looking down the road a tad, what is it going to take for the, for the powers to be, the city officials to say, huh, maybe this isn't working? I truly believe it's it's the pressure from the public. The public has got to stand up and say, you know, we we have to have our voices be heard. We think that that money is helping. We think that that they're doing something right and Feel we're busy good. with our own lives. But you know what? We have to stop being busy with our own lives because we aren't going to have any lives if we keep this up. Yeah. You know, we, I mean, that's just the way it is. Our kids are going to be in trouble. Our, you know, I mean, grandkids, whatever, all the all of the above. And ourselves, because it's not going to be safe. I mean, and and you can say what you want to. It's heartless to say, you know, that that you've got to tell them they can't come in if they aren't going to be cleaned up. That sounds heartless. But guess what? They need to. So tell it's them not heartless. Right? I don't think so. It's but not I know it heartless. heartless. It's it, full of heart. Yeah. It it's is what's big picture, love. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's big love. picture, right? Short term. I'm sorry, folks. People got stuff, right? Everybody's got stuff. Life ain't fair. We got rules. You got to just work within them. But so we're going to call oh. Washoe County. We're going to ask them to come awesome. on the show. We're going to see if we can get an answer direct from them. What would it take? Maybe we can get something started. Who knows? Never know. Yeah. And all it takes is quick phone call. I mean, and then we can see where we can go from there. But we can't just make it one call. We have to call more times. Than I'd once agree. And we always, no. you know, <laughs> I, I was reading this book that was so fascinating, talking about different approaches, right? Most people break it down. There's two choices. We fix it or we don't, right? right. We make it simple choices. Well, Ultimately, there's multiple stuff going on, you know, right? And, and multiple and, choices. And I, I heard that same, same way to, about problem solving. Is that divergence? Was, is so that what it that could, is? it could be divergence. It could be divergence, right? Our word of the day, divergence. Certainly, any government <laughs> point of view is divergent from right? my. No, not a variation. Divergent <laughs> than mine. Right? <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> Division. Hmm. What do you think? Is it? Oh, I, I, well, absolutely. I was going to say that I heard just exactly what what you said is that you have two choices. 
you take the responsibility to change it or you do nothing. But you have to take the responsibility if you want to get it done. It's only two chances you have. I So I think there's way more than two choices. That's where I was going, right? Politicians and people running for stuff and us on air. We make it black and white because it's easier to see, right? It's easier. You can highlight something or not. But, I think uh, most but, things uh, have more than two choices are way more complicated. But if Ed, we don't Ed's, dig into uh, no. it to solve. Well, that's I'm going to I'm going to sway us right over to our word of the day because that's a perfect example uh, because with divergence, there are like six different uh, explanations, definitions, whatever you want to call them. Divergent? Divergence. I mean, a divergent on divergent. <laughs> there are. There's even a math explanation. Right? Oh, wow. I'm not going to go into that <laughs> one. Well, it's got to be right then. <laughs> ah, I don't know. We have trouble with the English version, let alone math. However, right? in this particular, this is, uh, dic I believe I got this from dictionary.com. Yeah. They actually use the condition of being divergent in divergence. I hate that. I hate that. That's just not right. You can't <laughs> use the word as part of the in, definition. In the, uh, yeah, in the definition. you can't do that. Why did they do that? For yeah. shame. Hey, they I broke mean, the rules. So, right. That's one of those things. They should be in, like, kindergarten jail. Right? <laughs> they didn't learn that back when they were six. See, discipline them. <laughs> well, be best I know, schools failed. That's right. You know, I, right. I, I have to, I have to kind of take you to task on what you said about politicians that's exactly what they do is they blow smoke all the time well right but it's easy for people when there's a bad choice and a good choice when there's more than that people aren't good well that's what that's what they do is they pivot oh yeah well how about this and you never get they have a divergent opinion oh he used it in a sentence good so best him. i know nobody's got a divergent opinion but us everybody else got the same opinion <laughs> same right all good spend money on that that'll fix it throw it we're that's just, right and boy do i feel good i am johnny money seed throwing money at everything fixing everything Wow, you guys are just going to town. He got y'all hyped That's up. That's right. Yeah. I love when someone is as good as Paul because he gives me hope that we could solve stuff. Yes. Yeah, There's right, times recently where I'm like, I'm not sure. He's yeah. a good guy. He's yeah, good I'm guy. not sure we can solve stuff. And so when you see somebody with great ideas and an opinion, I love it. It is. You know, that will be nice if you if you contact uh, the city hall and talk to the magicians because they will disguise oh, it. Washoe County, probably, as opposed <laughs> to city hall. <laughs> I think do they have County's magicians on their card? They do. <laughs> hey, they make things disappear. What problem? <laughs> Could right? be. You never know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear some synonyms real quick? Oh, uh, I can't get them in. No, you yeah. can't get them in. Not enough time for you. Okay. Uh, see, he, he knows that clock. All right. <laughs> we're going to be right back after these words. Have you, a friend or family member, been diagnosed with cancer? Dr. Forsyth at the Forsyth Cancer Care Center offers an all-inclusive program to treat adult types of cancer. The Forsyth Immune Protocol Cancer Treatment Plan, in a current prospective study of over six and a half years and 1,200 adult cancer patients, has produced a remarkable 30 times greater survival statistic when compared to conventional full-dose chemotherapy. Greater than 95% of all their patients choose low-dose insulin-potentiated life chemotherapy therapy using only 10 to 15 percent chemotherapy dosing with insulin. Dr. Forsyth has long been considered one of the most respected physicians in the United States, particularly for his treatment of cancer and the legal use of human growth hormone. Located in Reno, Nevada, Dr. Forsyth has seen patients from all over the world. To schedule your consultation today, call 775-827-0707. That number again is 775-827-0707. Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to LRPNV.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones? Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you, and they have a professional assistant on site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775 356 1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices? books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand you or your business, just call 775-356-1004. 
or go to lrpmv.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Man in the Math, does every week. Just go to lrpnv.com. That's lrpnv.com or call 775-356-1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right arch support and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet where comfort and your feet meet. Want to expand your advertising dollar? Sponsor this or any America Matters program by calling 775-827-8900, extension 2. Now back to the show. Welcome back. This is What's the Story? My name is Janice Hermson, and I'm here with Ed Knoll from Omega Mortgage, Doug Ashby, author of Heroes and Giants, and we've just been having a rip-roaring time. That's right. We are divergent. <laughs> we well, are divergent you... from the norm. All right. So you wanted to share some synonyms. Hey, for I could go divergent. through it. It'll only take me. Oh, a half hour? <laughs> fire away. Well, fire away. Uh, uh, different, differing, deviating, conflicting, opposing, varying, dissimilar, unlike, contrasting, disagreeing, clashing, incompatible, contradictory. And I like the last one, at odds. So, see, I think the opposing, yeah, divergence, not necessarily opposing, right? right? And right. to me, it goes into that two thing. If one's right, the other has to be wrong. It's not true. I think there's five, six, seven variables, not two. Hmm. Well, there's your opinion for you. <laughs> I know. I've just been aggravated, cranky. I can hear it. You that. know what? I'm so happy to talk to Paul because... Right. I thought I was like divergent of all opinions. <laughs> I guess not. There is somebody's I uh, no. have a similar personality. Well, and it. I thought I had what the what the um, what do you call it? The origin and the year. You know, I, think I, it was I tried 16th, to look that up. It was very it was difficult, the 1600s. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I thought that it was. I thought yeah. I saw that. But now I'm not finding it, of course, yeah. because I'm looking for it. Hmm, why should I find it if I'm looking? So for Adam it? and Eve were divergent, right? This probably goes back to the beginning of time. I imagine right? you are correct. <laughs> yes, my my list says other words for divergence are separation, division, variation, and deviation. So that that's mm, my what deviation. Do you think? Deviation. You like that word? So. Oh, yeah. here it is. Yes, from the medieval Latin <laughs> word. <laughs> Divergentia, dating back to 1650 to 1660s. So I address. should be a librarian. You should. You know, the trouble is it was a completely different word then, but it became divergent. Yeah, well, <laughs> in our world, we know that um, recession is not a recession anymore. So, you know, today's recession is not the same as yesterday's recession. You know what? Right? That whole are they gonna, telling people what words. Are they going to get upset words? with me now because I use that word? So the government's telling us what words we can and can't use for stuff. I've been oh, for absolutely. a while now. I've I'm telling you, man, it's just aggravating. Very yeah, aggravating. It's oxymorons. So well, yeah. you know, it just falls harder for them. Right. I mean, it goes back to that, Doug, if you know, remember when you talking about that one person who said, like, you never deny, tell them what you tell them, tell them what you're going to believe. That's all they do. They deny reality. Well, the, you know, it's an old axiom in the news media or from a politician. You can tell a lie long enough and hard enough. It becomes the truth. So 
Hmm. Well, there you go. So I, I want to mention that today, August 2nd, is a day when there are five different primaries going on across the United States. We have one in Arizona, Kansas, Missouri, Washington, and Michigan. Wow. It's amazing that there are that many going on on the same day, right? Well, it's Tuesdays, right? As we get through, all the Tuesdays got I, stuffed I now. know. They got stuffed with a lot. So this particular website talks a little bit about what they think is going to happen and what direction, like Republican, Democrat, you know, which way they think that it's likely to go, even though this is just the primary, right? I, it's uh, irrelevant. Uh, it's so crazy. You can't, how can you know? There's so much that's going to happen between now and November. And hopefully we'll actually have an election. Yeah, between now and then, we might be speaking Chinese. No, oh, it depends <laughs> on what Nancy decides to do, right? <laughs> She's serious like, come have on. you seen any of the i gotta i, I have to go i think we ought to give it to her just no. trade her for nothing they've had different memes going on on online on the different uh, social media not facebook obviously but some of the other social media where they show nancy flying across on her broom they say look there's <laughs> oh, a, a sighting. harry potter reference yeah, there's a sighting there's a sighting of nancy i mean it's funny it's just funny and i know people are going to get mad at me for that but it to me you need to lighten up the day right yeah. and because they weren't sure if she was going to go or not go they, you know, they said, oh, I think we've had a sighting of Nancy in Taiwan. And you see this. <laughs> you know, but isn't it a call? Uh, isn't it back to the basics? Why did she do what she did? So does but, anybody know why she's going there? No. Congress people go all the freaking time. But why now? Why her? She never goes anywhere. Come on. She, was, she goes to the she... beauty shop during COVID. <laughs> she goes. She probably went to China during the last COVID lockdown. Well, that's oh, where oh, she's been. Goodness. Going to the beauty shop didn't work. <laughs> so right, she's she's a rich gal. She was born a rich gal, grew up a rich gal in the Bay Area. Best I know, she's not really in tune with what regular folks talk about. Have a clue. Look at her city, you know. And I'll have to go back to uh, a great civil rights guy that John Lewis, right, who passed this past year. What a great civil rights leader, but a horrible house person. His area is just froth. His right. schools are right. horrible, yeah. right? I mean, they have to go in. Their kids can't even read, uh, like high school kids. It, he was a horrible Congress people. We have to be honest what we're good at and what we're not. So let's get honest about this then. Since you bring sure. that up, I'll go to this topic. Yeah. It, this one, this is an article I pulled up this morning, and it says Trump baffles GOP by endorsing Eric in the Missouri Senate primary, a race with three Eric's. He doesn't identify which Eric he's supporting. I just thought it was the funniest thing. That is. I mean, you know, talk about trolling somebody, right? Maybe none, none of these, because we all know that these guys pay for endorsements. Maybe none of them paid. Right. So he said, well, rather than not endorsing anybody, I'm going to endorse all of them. <laughs> well, no, that's a good idea. Right? I just you think know it's what? Funny. His, his record will be 100 percent. It will be 100 percent, won't yeah, it? And he seems to yeah. care about that record. <laughs> and and the thing is, I truly believe that that there's more to all this endorsement stuff. I think there's messaging going on. I think there's all sorts of things. And the other thing was and my sister and I both thought the same thing. You know, Eric is representative of the organization that the states belong to that that um, use the, the electronic registration. Oh, right. That's a part, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for the voter records. So they were named after. So, right. So so when I read it, I went, Trump baffles GOP by endorsing Eric. Is he saying he wants to use Eric? <laughs> So, Meaning the voting machines. Yes, the, well, it's not machines, but it's the actual uh, it's the organization oh. that that takes our votes and, you know, or takes our voters and throws them in. Anyway, I don't want to go into all that, but I wanted to just <laughs> share because I just thought it was amusing. And I know my sense of humor is sometimes a little odd. But, we got, uh, we got to know, open up. have to laugh about it, It's the stuff. most ridiculous stuff Because ever. everybody's all, oh, he didn't endorse anybody. Oh, he didn't tell. Who cares? You have maybe what he's saying is think for yourself. So How about what, that? So that would be There's a miracle a because I agree with yeah. you. People need to I'm, open your minds and think, make a decision. Maybe he's picking all these crummy people <laughs> to make you look at it and say, who do I think is the best person? How about that? 
You know, I mean, maybe not. Maybe he just didn't get paid. I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about the man other than what I've I seen. I don't like know when else, there's three but... people and nobody's paid. I'd have bid a buck, <laughs> right? Here you go, Donald. Endorse me for a buck. That's right. Right. I I'll mean, bid two. That's right. <laughs> then you get the bidding war and you end up somewhere, like ninety nine. That's right. That's right. Oh, my goodness. You know, there is so much going on out there. I'm not going to cover it all in this segment because we won't have time. But I do want to mention for Nevada, since we've talked a little bit about Nevada today, that there is going to be a um, some an election. Well, let me just read it to you here. Uh, yeah, there's going to be an election. Sure. <laughs> Nevada election blog, state officials working to adopt hand counting regulations. So the Secretary of State is going to have on November, or excuse me, August 12th, the, um, in, they're looking for input from the public on proposed regulations for conducting a hand tabulation of ballots and elections. Well, I don't know if you guys know, but Nye County is attempting to get to those paper ballots that they voted for. I saw it on the news. Yeah, see, and you're hearing it right here, too. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, we're way more fact-based. Yeah, so they are trying to go to that. So I guess the Secretary of State's office is kind of jumping in there. They're going to get some regulations going on so that they can figure out how they're supposed to regulate conducting a hand tabulation. One. Let's see. Hold on. Two. Sign, <laughs> sign, date after you check. And of course, these are um, right. They're smaller counties, so they have the same. Right. There's just less people. Right. They have right. less votes, sure. too. So they might have five people on their whole thing. Right. <laughs> It'd be like second grade, voting so, for class president. Well, on August 12th, if you're interested, it's going to be online. It's a virtual. They're not doing it in person, so you don't have to worry about being anywhere. Oh, you can bummer. just go online. I know. I would like to go. Yeah. You can go online, and you can chit-chat, give your opinion, whatever it is you want to do, or you can write in. So uh, check that out. Nevada Secretary of State's office. Go to SOS in Nevada and go to elections. You'll be able to find their little meetings. Go I to guess, the blog. Where's National Write Your Congressman when you need them, right? <laughs> Remember those guys? <laughs> Where are they? I don't know. They work yeah, for so the postal in service. this particular, the Reno Gazette Journal says going rogue. Two Nevada counties push for paper ballots ahead of primary election. How are they going rogue? Their counties voted for this. That's not right going here. Rogue. Could be their whole vote, right? right? I mean, it's just people. To me, it's the simplest path. Simple works, folks. And you know, I, I don't know how that's going rogue, RGJ. I have to ask that question because bad adjective. I, I think it is because they're not going rogue. That's what the vote was. How is that being right? That's rogue? what the people want. That's right. Right, the people. People, right, when it's the federal government, they're shoving it down your throat, folks. Right. That's the minority shoving it on the bulk of us, <laughs> right? When it comes up through the counties in the state, that's the people talking. There you go. So believe, you know, believe the truth on that. Yep. There you go. I agree. So, um, like I said, if you, if you have an opportunity on August 12th, then uh, go for it and go to that meeting because it'll be <laughs> online for you. I'm guessing that. Uh... <laughs> so I was going to say, so I'm going to be in Las Vegas at um, orientation for my son. Oh, yeah. When is that? All right. The 12th. The there 12th. You go. Well, you can go online anyway. All right. We're going to take a break now. We'll be back. The Delta and Bonanza Saloons in Virginia City are simply elegant. Imagine ascending the grand staircase and being surrounded by the Victorian elegance and grandeur of the historic banquet rooms. Original crystal chandeliers, mahogany bars, and oak dance floors highlight the eloquently appointed spaces. A truly romantic and unique setting for your wedding, banquets, or holiday parties. Detailed ceremony and menu planning ensures your special event is a memorable occasion. With just one call to Jesse at 775-847-0789, all of your arrangements will be handled by their experienced staff with your every expectation in mind including cakes flowers photography videography music and party amenities complete ceremony and reception packages are available as well as their famous themed weddings since 1865 the delta and bonanza saloons guests have come from every state in the union now it's your turn no event is too large or too small let the delta and bonanza saloons plan your next incredible event call jesse at 775-847-0789 
At Northern Nevada Family Dental, we are proud to announce a wide range of advanced dental services by way of the Photona Lightwalker Laser. The Lightwalker Laser can efficiently and effectively treat most periodontal problems from deep persistent pocketing to peri-implantitis and a multitude of conditions in between. Have cold sores? We can inhibit the cycle of the virus and sometimes even prevent them from occurring. Do you have a snoring or CPAP problem? Through the amazing healing power of light, we can treat tissues inside the mouth without anesthesia, appliances, or cutting so that after just one treatment, most people sleep better and quieter that same night. By using the power of the laser intra orally, we can also smooth facial wrinkles and tighten sagging necklines, all without you having to be numb and there's no downtime. It can even be done on a lunch break. Through the FDA approved Power of Light, these treatments and many more are now available at Northern Nevada Family Dental in Sparks. Have I piqued your interest? Give us a call at 626 7772 or visit us at northernnevadafamilydental.com. Destination Midtown. Experience the difference. Reno's premier shopping extravaganza. Everything imaginable and more. Midtown matters. Get down to Midtown. Beefies, the best little diner in the biggest little city. Cheeseburgers extraordinaire, chili cheese omelets, and the best milkshakes in Midtown and Reno. Beefies, try the full Beefies menu and beer on tap. Beefies, South Virginia at Arroyo. Midtown Reno. Experience the difference. Get down to Midtown. Midtown matters. Did you realize that radio advertising doesn't cost? It pays. America Matters Media has an opening for a person who would like to represent our sales department on a full or part-time commission basis. Prior sales experience, preferable. So, if you have good presentation, negotiation, organization, and communication skills, America Matters wants to talk to you. Contact Eddie Floyd, 775-384-4444. Do it today. Wake up the sun below, got another road to sow. Let the fire fill the hole, swelling up from the depths of my soul. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americamatters.us and click on the podcast link. Now back to the show. And welcome back. This is What's the Story? And I'm going to go right over to Ed Knoll, and we're going to talk a little bit about finance today. Right, the Tuesday economic sto- uh, story, right? Did you hear that noise today? I didn't. That what was, was the that da- noise. That was the Dow dropping 400 I know, points. I did, right? didn't it? Yeah. Really? Pummeling. So, um, Right, so the Dow going down and mortgage rates staying pretty much flat, right? Being off a little bit late. They've been on a a joyride the last couple of weeks. Obviously, today was a statement on where the economy is based on activities of the Fed raising rates three quarters of a point last week, right? Price of oil, all kinds of things. Mortgage rates have always been tied to the price of oil. And if you right. notice, right, oil's paused for about a month. Right. So of rates, but the Fed raised, we got a little negative activity going on stock market. I suspect that. uh, What are what are mortgage rates right now? So they're highly specific. It's pretty much like (laughs) mental health. What do you got going on? So uh, if you have. What's your credit score and what program are you going in? What percentage investment property? It's all specific. Loan size. Give me a range. So doesn't he sound like a customer? He does kind of. <laughs> so I'll say this. So I have like a jumbo client with 800 credit putting 25% down and his rate today was five and a quarter. Ooh, that's awesome. That's right? awesome. So most of the Fannie Freddie rates, if you're looking at five, 10% down, 800 credit, you're in the sixes, six and a quarter, six and three eighths. Really? FHA, right? You could be too. Five and three quarters. I had one close last week. It's kind of where it was before today. The market's been pretty stagnant. Today it moved against us pretty hard. Um, like I said, obviously in equities and bonds too. Lots of price uh, increases today. Boy, the bank's got to be loving this. So it's interesting, right? I mean, I'm doing my own self analysis, but J.P. Morgan Chase got out and uh, and and when they announced their profits. They had profits. They were way off their projections and they took a hit. Well, U.S. Bank and other lending institutions came out and beat expectations. 
um, depending on what they were doing. So banks have been mixed, right? I don't know what Chase has been doing if they're not making money. <laughs> um, but everybody's up and down. You know, I, I talk about the mortgage sector with Dodd-Frank, us getting realigned, and really the last big government agency or institution to get pummeled, which is about 2011. Now you got the tech companies. This is a tech beater, right? They're consolidating, laying off Facebook. I mean, right? They get all these. So we're talking about schools going bad. All these online companies, Google, Facebook, have all these schools and campuses. And nobody's on them either. <laughs> so craziness. Well, I would, I would think because interest rates are are high right now comparatively. So oh, it, mm, it, it's, comparatively to what? To what it was six months ago. So not six months ago. They uh, went from three to five about right, then. Right. Okay. So to me, they're way five low. Five is they're low. low. Five they're is way low. low. Historically. Yes, historically, they are. Your dad didn't get 5%. That's right. Oh, well, I bought my first home. The interest rates were seven percent, and I was tickled to death. That's to get right. What That's I'm saying point. is, yeah. your perspective on five percent is inaccurate to me. Well, no. What the way I would look at it, as a consumer, you mean to tell me, Ed, if I would have come to you six months ago, I could have got a three and a half percent loan? Yep. Well, I would say it's gone up. And since, where I was going since, with that yeah, is that he's correct, people, but... people can't be doing refinancing now because the so they totally can because they're paying 25 percent on a credit card they're paying 10 percent right. on an auto loan yeah and so they're not in balance that five percent still the cheapest That's money right. they got if they if they do points? a cash out so well you can have points don't have points right. get, Again, it's, it's, it's burger king right you can right. have it your way <laughs> uh, wait, excuse me that will, anyway, whoa, 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 wait a minute have will, you ever have you ever thought of going into politics no but that will drive the rate based on are you going to pay points yeah. or not pay points right. i mean i think people must understand that by now i would hope and if they don't a, a mortgage guy like ed will explain it to you yeah call that's somebody where you understand gets paid. Yeah. yeah that's how he gets paid when I, you know that somebody's got to get paid somewhere right when i sold my first house i had to pay two points to get rid of the loan and you don't hear about that. It was a prepay penalty. You don't. Oh, yeah. hear so that's a recommendation I make now for folks, realtors I work with that have listings, right? For instance, home recently, it's in contract now at 395. It was listed for 400. They made an offer at 390, right? So the client said, hey, uh, we'll settle for 395 and you pay a point. Well, that's like, 391 because it points four grand right, right. and they use that to get a better rate and so it's not all price right deceleration they're helping the client get a better rate so they achieve a better transaction it works for both of them there you go it does it's happening now yeah watch this i'm gonna i'm gonna switch gears on you guys because okay. i want to talk about this one story and then we're because we're going to do the uh book blitz in the next segment so i don't want to miss this one this is for my cousin in wisconsin uh a story about the i'll tell you how they label this from the washington post wisconsin anti-voting fraud activist commits voter fraud to make a point oh, and in a sense he did in a sense he did he, but he also turned himself in, you know, all these things. He did do it to make a point. A Wisconsin man this week ordered absentee ballots for himself in the names of a mayor and a top state lawmaker who was Robin Voss in what he says was an attempt to expose vulnerabilities in the state's voting system. Harry Waite, who leads a group in southeastern Wisconsin that is focused on voting issues, said Thursday he was willing to go to jail to prove his point. And of course, this made a lot of folks mad, but what he did, he used the state's online elections portal Tuesday to request absentee ballots for the August 9th primary. I actually worked on this website with my cousin because she was curious as to, you know, how does this work? And she was checking some things. So I'm familiar with this site and I was shocked at how simple it was to get into it. Um, so he's proving the point. Um, he hang on a second so he made the request um, an absentee ballot for the august 9th primary to be sent to his home 
for Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, all right, and Racine Mayor Corey Mason. So it worked. He was able to make the request. Now, he didn't say, I, at the time I saw this report, he didn't say whether or not he actually got it, but he did it with a couple other people that knew what he was doing. He was covering. And, yeah, and and they it did work. Those ballots without any ID, without any anything because they said um indefinitely confined and when they checked the box right well indefinitely confined didn't have to have id they just sent it off so that means that if i live at xyz address you could go in and say oh i'm gonna get her ballot yeah and you put in and you know my birth date you know certain things about me you put it in you have it sent to your address you vote it for me that's a well, real flaw. What happens? What happens when you go to vote then? I can't. You can't. Mm -mm. Ah. No, no. So at that point, if you're here in Nevada, what you need to do, if somebody says that, and you have your ballot in your hand, if you have your ballot in your hand, you can go and report that to the sheriff that you've had identity theft because you can prove that nobody could have voted your ballot. So yeah. somebody stole your identity. And the sheriff would do what? Oh, that's I nice. Thanks for sharing. Oh, no, there should be a, a claim file. There should be a report file. Yeah. So, you know, that's what should happen. But I thought that was an interesting story. It is. Because Especially this late in the game. That's huh? right. That's right. Yeah. This These kinds of holes should have been plugged from the standpoint of, you know, different Except websites. Except people in power don't think they have any problems, right? And they the, just deny, deny, and deny. And that's exactly what the people in power did. They said, oh, no, we don't really have a problem. No, 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 that's not a problem. How is it not a problem? He didn't have to show any ID. And you moved, you changed the address. You sent it to a different address. Yeah, that's that's, that's crazy. I have another problem is why Wisconsin didn't have a paper big enough to like report something. The Washington they might Post. Have, but the the Washington, Washington Post is a report on Wisconsin news. It's that the matters. one I found. Give me a break. No, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, is there the Milwaukee Sentinel or something? Yes, there is the Milwaukee Sentinel, <laughs> oh, as a matter of fact. Oh, I didn't know. You must have uh, known that. <laughs> I just I just think so, right? So here's an out-of-state publication talking about the state, right? The people inside don't get that. Right. Right. And they don't want them to get that. Well, I know, but right. the Milwaukee Sentinel should be. Yes, well, repeating. there's there must. I'll have to check now. I have to break. I'll, I'll check and see. Check with the, the cheesehead correspondent. That's right. <laughs> cheesehead correspondent. I did send her the story. She hasn't gotten back. Is to that me. one of I'll those? I bet I went to spam. Mork, Mork from Mork, Mork <laughs> from Mork. Right. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel is the name of the paper. So we'll <laughs> I'm have looking. To... <laughs> Talk about good. Yeah. <laughs> You knew that. Come on. Oh, that's funny. I may have heard it somewhere. <laughs> you probably did. That's my guess. Yes. Yeah, so we should find a story from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel because they should be covering this story so that those folks in that area know what's going on because that's important. It totally is. Yeah. All right. We're going to take our break. We're going to come back with our book Blitz, our recommendations for you to read. Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to LRPNV.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones? Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you, and they have a professional assistant on-site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775-356-1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices, books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand and you or your business, just call 775-356-1004 or go to lrpmv.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Man on the Map, does every week. Just go to lrpmv.com. That's lrpmv.com or call 775-356-1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? 
hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right art support and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet where comfort and your feet meet. Sliced fresh sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of subs way. Could be a smoking number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is your number one phase. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Sliced fresh sandwiches, port of subs. Port of Subs is celebrating 50 years as your neighborhood sandwich shop. We're saying mahalo to our customers with a chance to win a dream vacation to Maui for four. Imagine spending a week lounging on sun-drenched beaches and falling asleep to the sound of rolling waves. Entering is easy. Visit portofsubs.com to enter to win Port of Subs' 50th anniversary getaway and join our Port Perks program for fun and delicious ways to earn extra entries. Aloha. No purchase necessary. Whatever your number, the dream and love, Hey, all you entrepreneurs out there, whether you have a small business or work from home, LaRue Press offers a virtual office and business address for all your business needs. Located at 280 Greg Street, Suite 10, LaRue Press is your personal assistant for friendly all day service. Need a conference room to meet with clients? You got it. With LaRue Press, you also get phone answering service, mail forwarding, package pickup, and even help branding your business. Call LaRue Press at 849-3814 or go online to lrpnv.com. Did you realize that radio advertising doesn't cost? It pays. America Matters Media has an opening for a person who would like to represent our sales department on a full or part-time commission basis. Prior sales experience, preferable. So, if you have good presentation, negotiation, organization, and communication skills, America Matters wants to talk to you. Contact Eddie Floyd, 775-384-4444. Do it today. Now she's gone like a... Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. This is What's the Story, and we are going to do our book blitz. I said I was going to lead with that, but I want to tell you, because at the end of the last segment, Ed asked, doesn't the Milwaukee have some kind of a publication? The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel did do a story on the fraud that happened. And the headline is, after residents commit voter fraud to make a point, Racine Sheriff seeks to end online ballot requests instead of an investigation. Yeah, instead of solving the problem, uh, they're just yeah, eliminating they're the gonna, option. They're going to eliminate the option, which I don't know what that does to people who are indefinitely confined. Now what do they do? So can right? this guy do that? I first of all, <laughs> right? That sounds kind of willy-nilly random. Oh, well, the first thing they do is... Good word. Yeah. The first thing they do is tell you that this particular county sheriff has campaigned for former President Donald Trump. And then, of course, tell you how you he spread widespread oh, faceless claims. Oh, my goodness. That's their lead. Then um, was notified of a successful plot to commit voter fraud by a group of conservative activists. But the sheriff is blaming state election officials for the violations instead of pursuing charges against the offenders. Does the press think we're in second grade? We got Donald Trump cooties. We got <laughs> Donald Trump cooties. You can't do anything right. No. Right. It's that one yep. or good yes. or bad. Yes. Members of a Racine County based group. That promote well for the first in the beginning. Let me just say, I I read another story about this before, and they they didn't uh, they went to Racine and they said this is what we did. So there's no investigation really required. I mean, they know what happened, right? But the investigation should be 
how did this continue to happen? How can this continue yeah, can to happen? Can anyone do it? And can we anybody do it? And so there should be some investigation. But to just point fingers at this guy because he supported Donald Trump, that's just silly. So my opinion. Um, it, so probably, the, it probably works, though. Uh, it might. They've Members been of the doing Racine it for group five promote years. false claims of voter fraud in the 2020 election, committed election crimes by submitting false information to prove a point, obviously, to obtain absentee ballots, in some cases posing as prominent officials, to show violations of the law are possible. They probably did that because unless they affect the people that are making these laws, right. how are you going to how get they, them to change? Well, right? that's obviously what you've been yes, facing and getting stonewalled. Exactly. No, no, it didn't happen to me. Right. So instead of promising to investigate the crimes, Schmalling publicized the having a name like that makes it tough. So publicized I'm just the plot. Say guilty. Yes, no, guilty <laughs> yeah. with the name. On on social media as being helpful in rooting out vulnerabilities in the state election system and blame the Wisconsin Elections Commission. So now we're blaming instead of working together, mm. calling on commissioners to remove a way voters can easily request ballots online. So, you know, the story goes on from there. But obviously, this is, you know, tit for tat. They're going at each other. You know, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. You should investigate. No, you should do something about it. And it doesn't look like too much is going to happen. So who knows? But they did make a point because we're talking about it. And it's obvious. I'm going to call my cousin and say, hey, you better check that out and make sure that you're getting your ballot. That's yeah, you better go on you. there and order your own That's ballot. That's right. And make sure that you're getting it and it's not going to somebody else. So, I mean, that's horrible. And especially... For somebody who is indefinitely confined, that's awful because they need a system like that to be able to do what they need to do, but not a fallible system like that. Right. So anyway, that's my take on it. Good. Uh, you got a book for us? Oh, I do. I do. I uh, do, you know, I do. I, I, You're not getting married. You're just doing a book. <laughs> no, oh, really? Is, yeah, well, this is going to be right, right on for exactly what we're talking about. The name of the book is A Case Against Socialism, and it's by Rand Paul. Oh, okay. And, 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 like another, Paul. and, and another, I do too, and another author uh, uh, did this, and I'll, I'll get to that other person who wrote this with him. Let me, first of all, one of the major underlining political frauds of our day is the battle between capitalism and socialism. People hear of the supposed benefits of socialize, uh, socialism with all of the freebies, health care, free college, uh, education, and more. But there are plenty of people against socialism. This book by Senator Rand Paul makes a compelling case against socialism. Now, this is the reason that I picked this book. He did it with his wife. Oh, nice. Yes, a lady by the name of Kelly Ashby. <laughs> That's why he picked the book. <laughs> it is. And uh, if funny. you read anything about her, she is evidently, they've been married for 23 years. They have th uh, three boys. And they say that she is the, literally the brains behind Rand Paul. Anyway, she's the co-author. <laughs> she is the co-author of A Case Against Behind Every socialism. Man is a Good Woman. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, good book. See, Debbie, I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Fire away. I'm still debating that last <laughs> comment behind every, So behind every man is a good woman. No. Behind oh, no. maybe every successful man, there's a good woman. I'll give you that one. That's right. But you took that to heart, and you have the women lined up back there. I do. <laughs> the, the, since they're not listening, they didn't quite measure up. Oh, <laughs> you're going to pay for that. So, yeah. okay. So I cheated. Jay's going to get you if nothing I else. I cheated on the book blitz. But right, so I'm a mortgage banker. What do they say to do now, folks? Oh, pay your credit cards down, save all that money in your bank. Well, right now, you need the money for now, right? When rates were three percent, should have been saving, right? Should have been putting money in the bank for times like now. I, <laughs> I um, subscribe to americasaves.org. It's a website, americasaves.org, and I signed up and I just get messages like one a month, couple a month, or on tax day, it'll say, 
don't spend all your tax savings, put some in the bag, right? So little notes on to save throughout the year and ways uh, to keep saving, right? Ways to benefit. I think folks that we don't take, you know, we talk about accountability with the mayor and, and right. Uh, We're seen. <laughs> this home thing, right? Well, we need to take accountability of our own responsibility financially, morally, whatever. We got to, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And get on it, folks. Save money. AmericaSaves.org, I found is an easy tool and reminder to tell me I haven't put enough money away. So instead of reading a book, go to AmericaSaves.org and save some money and then you can read a book. Yes, you can. Oh, then they can buy the book. <laughs> they can buy the but book. But big picture, folks, look at the big picture, right? I get, you know, we go from a from check to check, from but right, we need to be saving and making progress on that. Yeah, right. Do. Financial health will give you choices that a lot of people aren't going to have in the coming years. Ed, we just saw from the first hour the big picture, and I don't want to look at it. <laughs> so if you have money, you can avoid it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, and it offers choosing your savings goal. It's also for organizations. Yeah, which it's I think awesome. kind of cool. And there's a little resource center here. I don't have time to really like look, tell you all the different things, but looks like a, a pretty good and it tells you who they are and you know why they're doing what they're doing. So check them out, americasaves.org. And no, we do not get anything for promoting them. Nope. And we aren't looking for it. So, nope. um, and I don't have time to do any book, but that's okay. Oh. I will tell you though, what I will tell you is if you have a book you want, and you can't find it um, anywhere around and you'd like us to order it for you, we can do that. We have some great pricing and our available or our uh, selection is huge. Um, we have been able to get with a distributor that, you know, kind of opens up all the doors. So uh, any book you want, let us know. We'll see if we can find it and we'll let you know you know what the turnaround is on that um, most of the ones that we've had requested so far we've been able to find and get so it's a good thing um, awesome yeah and some of them are you know not real well-known authors sometimes and sometimes older books um so it just depends it varies you know some are out of print but we'll know that at least and then you'll know it too and then you know you got to go online look for that you know used out there at some of those other websites not ours <laughs> Don't you think it'd be cool to go into people's homes and take like a snapshot of like their bookshelf that represents That'd them? That'd be kind of fun. Right? Oh, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. You know, so fun. stuff Absolutely. that people value. I know. I've like looked it. at mine. Well, I, I have a little, yeah. right? I just have a little. Mine's oh. not as grand as yeah. some. <laughs> but don't don't put magazines in there. Oh, So not? best I know, National Geographic could hold oh, up yeah, in that you, space. Oh, yeah, but you have this... this uh, 30 years of Playboy. Oh, I, th oh, I thought you goodness. were talking about ARP. Time a to go, guys. I thought you were talking about AARP. We need to close yeah, this 30 out. 30 years of back issues. <laughs> it's time to go. Go into our weirdness again. All right, we'll be back next week, and we hope you'll join us. Thank you for being with us. This is What's the Story. One in three adults in America have pre-diabetes, but most don't know it. To let people know it.